This is actually something I haven't ever tried out myself, rebuilding a topology just from the uh, LSA database, so it's uh, interesting to watch real time here. Hey everybody, this is Ed from Practical Networking, and in this video, we have a special collaboration with Jeremy of Jeremy's IT Lab. The plan for this video is an addendum to the OSPF series that I've been working on. And the challenge is, can I rebuild an OSPF topology using just the LSDB, just like a router would when it's sharing LSDB information with other routers? To do this, I've enlisted the help of Jeremy, and he is actually going to build a OSPF topology that I've never seen, and I'm going to try and rebuild it, or at least redraw re out the topology using only the LSDB. Hey guys, as I said, this is Jeremy from Jeremy's IT Lab. If you don't know my channel, I make videos about uh, Cisco networking on my channel. I have a complete CCNA course available and I just started a course for CCNP N core. So definitely check out my channel if you're interested. Um, I'm sharing my screen right now. You guys can probably see it. Here on the right side, we have a whiteboard that Ed is going to be using to draw out the network topology that I've created. Um, and to do that, to get the information to do that, is going to be using my terminal here on the side. So I have uh, here Telnet access to my uh, router and I'll be doing any commands that he wants me to show him, uh, anything related to the OSPF database. So for example, I can type in show IP OSPF database and then we get information about the LSAs in there. Perfect, and uh, recap of the rules. I am not allowed to see anything that has to do with show CDP neighbor or anything along those lines. All I can do is see the uh, show IP OSPF database output and then look into the details of each, each of the LSAs inside that database. And we should clarify that this is a single area OSPF topology. Uh, yeah. We will be doing we'll another video, a more advanced video using multi-area OSPF. But just for this first one, we're going to stick to single area. Okay, this should be good fun. So uh, with that said, let's, let's get into it. So sure. already it looks like uh, Jeremy has show IP OSPF database. And the way I like to start these exercises is by simply uh, putting out a router icon for every single type one LSA. So every router in OSPF is going to advertise a single type one LSA. And according to the output on Jeremy's screen, screen I see seven type one LSAs, which means we have seven routers. So let me go ahead and copy and paste this guy seven times. Now this doesn't tell us anything about how they're connected. So we're uh, hopefully gonna put that together as we go into the rest of the LSAs in the uh, database. Uh, and as Ed seems to have caught onto, I set the router ID of each router as 1.1.1.1 for R1, 2.2.2.2 for R2, et cetera. Okay, cool. So we know we have seven routers, uh, and then now we're going to look inside the type 1 LSA for each of them. And I'd like to start with the simplest, uh, and from there I'm looking at the link count column for each of the type 1 LSAs. And I noticed that the first two have a link count of three, and then it looks like router five and router six also have a link count of, of three. Router six seems to be doing some redistribution. I can see that with the type five LSAs at the bottom of the screen. So I'll omit that one for now. Let's start with type one and type two. So go ahead and show me, if you could, Jeremy, show me the type one LSA for router one. So what is that command? Show IP OSPF. Show database, database. Show up, and then router. And then 1.1.1.1, no. the, the link ID, right? Yep. Perfect. And that will tell me all the internal information about what's actually happening for uh, inside router one's LSA. Okay, so what do we have here? So we have a, uh, a, a router type LSA indicating to me that, that router one is connected to router two. I see that from the first, the first entry of those three entries. And then we have two stub entries indicating the links that router one is connected to. Uh, one of them is 192.168.1.0. It looks like that is a slash 30 network. And the other one is 192.168.7.0. And that's a slash 24 network. So to start, it looks like router one and router two are connected to each other. So let me go ahead and bring these two, oops, bring these two down here and actually connect them to each other. Now, the way these are connected might change. I might change the layout of the topology to make it easier as we go. But for now, we'll leave it at that. Now, there's another piece of information that is, is also telling us, let me make this a little bit bigger, is the link. So the stub, the, the middle stub network is actually telling us the IP network associated with the link between router one and router two. So that link is going to be 192.168.1.0 slash uh, that is 30. Let's see if I can make this smaller. Yep. 
All good so far. Perfect. This is actually something I haven't ever tried out myself, rebuilding a topology just from the uh, LSA database. So it's uh, interesting to watch real time here. Oh, super fun. So uh, I don't know the link IP address on router one's side just yet, uh, but notice notice uh, the point to point subtype inside the type one LSA indicates that the neighboring router is 2.2.2 .2 and the router interface address is 1.2. So I'm guessing dot two is the IP address on router two's interface. Now, I also know that router one is connected somewhere to the 192.168.7.0 network. Uh, and I will uh, leave this off to the side for now because I don't know what's on the other side just yet. And that is a slash 24. And I can tell this from the other stub network inside from the output. So that makes me content with the router one's connectivity. And again, I might change things around in a moment, but for now, let's leave it at this. So Jeremy, if you could do show IP USB up database again, I want to take a look at uh, the next, what I'll call easiest type one LSA sure. to take a look at. Cool. So that takes care of router one. I guess we just continue. We can jump on router two and take a look at the type one LSA for router two uh, sure. to see what we can discover. So there's three entries in there. And the first entry indicates we have a point to point link to another router, which is router one, which makes sense. Just like router one was telling us that it is neighbors with router two, router two is telling us that it is neighbors with router one. And it's also giving us the IP address for router one's interface uh, as dot one, which was kind of as we as we expected. Um, and really, it's the only other possible IP address you could get from a slash thirty, so that that kind of makes sense. Cool. So what else? So okay, we've got the the middle stub network is again confirming the IP address information for the link between router one and router two. That's all set. Now we have a transit network. Okay. So the transit networks are interesting. They are, uh, it's something sent inside a, a type one LSA, which is actually pointing to a type two LSA, indicating this is a multi-axis link. So I know router two is connected to a multi-axis link of sorts. Uh, and for that, to understand the, 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 the we'll say the, the intricacies of that, we wanna look at the type two LSA that's associated. So what's actually happening is in that transit network blob, it's saying, hey, there's a designated router with the IP address 192.168.3.1 that has more information about this link. So Jeremy, if you want to jump back to show IP USBF database, let's take a look at that type two. Uh, sure. Yeah, just do that, that command Yeah, for now. Yep. Perfect, cool. So there's the type two LSA, the network LSA, and that is in theory going to have more information about the multi-axis link that router two is connected to. So uh, Jeremy, if you want to do show IP USBF database network, 192.168.3.1. So here we're looking into the details of the multi-axis link, and this is uh, telling us a few different things. So to start, it's telling us all the routers that are attached to that link. So I see uh, router two, router three, and router five. So let's bring those down. So there's three, and there is five. And they'll do it this way. Now, I don't know whether it's a hub or a switch in the middle. There's not really a way for me to tell. Um, OSPF actually doesn't really know or care. Uh, it just knows that all three of those exist on that link. And so what I'm gonna do just to represent this for simplicity, I'm gonna do uh, just a square over here, or a rectangle, and I'll put and I'll put the uh, IP address that it's giving us. It's so 192.168.3.0 uh, zero slash 29. So the 29 appears on the network mask line over there. So this is telling us the network that is in between router two, three, and five is 192.168.3.0. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll just connect each of these to the network like this. Cool. Now I'm guessing Jeremy's following the nomenclature where the router, uh, router number is the last octet. Uh, but just, just so that we're not guessing at anything, we'll wait to fill those in as we go. Not necessarily. Um, Uh-oh, there's some tricks <laughs> in here. Perfect, this will be good fun. Um, what else do we wanna know from here? We know the IP address, uh, really the router interface. So let's go back to the type one LSA we were just looking at. Uh, and you should just be able to up arrow a couple of times and yep. or maybe three times and get there. Two to two to two. Uh, perfect, yeah. And what I wanna pull from here is the IP address of router three. So notice how there's two lines, the link ID, that's telling me the designated router's IP address. And then the next line is saying the router interface address, uh, and it's giving you the same IP address. So in this case, what this is telling me is that router two 
is the DR for this particular link, the designated router for that link. Uh, and router two's IP address is oh, dot one. Speaking of which, just as Jeremy just said, that's not always going to be the same as well. So I'm, yeah, router two's link on the 192.168.3 network is dot one from what I can tell from the uh, type one LSA. Yeah. Uh, we'll use the same LSA to, to, to confirm what IP addresses are on the link between router three and router four as well. And then we still have these routers, which we haven't actually uh, attached to anything just yet, but we'll get there. Um, okay. Yeah, cool. Looking so pretty good so far. Oh, sweet. Awesome. Um, so let's uh, just want on. to mention the link between R1 and R2. Um, the IP addresses are actually reversed. Oh, did I have them switched? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you want so to each, include that. Each of them was telling us the uh, the IP address of the local Yeah, link, of itself. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, where are we? So we're on two, three, four. Okay, cool. So now let's take a look at another type one LSA. So go ahead and do show IP OSBF database. And let's take a look at the next least complicated LSA we can find. Sure. So, okay. So router three has five in, in the link count column all the way on the right. Perfect. Uh, router four also has five. Router five has three. And since we already sort of have router five in our in our uh, diagram, let's go and go there. So let's look at the details sure. of router five's uh, perfect. Here we are. Cool. Okay. So starting from the bottom, a transit network. And again, this is confirming that router five is indeed connected to the 192.68.3.0 slash 29 network is giving you the DR's IP address, which is 3.1, which is a uh, router two. Um, but it's telling us its own IP address is dot three on router five. So let's go ahead and copy and paste this guy. Make this dot five. Dot five? Sorry, dot three. Dot three, <laughs> there you go. Good call. I was thinking router five. Okay, dot three, yeah, yeah. cool. That takes care of the transit network. Now let's look at the other two. So the stub network and the and the router type, uh, subtype, I guess you could call it, is a uh, or a point to point type, however you want to call it. It both of them sort of work together. So this is telling me that router five is connected to router six, and the network between those two is one and two and six eight four dot zero slash thirty. Um, so let's put router six into the mix and let's go ahead and connect it this way to kind of keep things. Hmm. Now, as we just learned, the IP address it's giving us is the IP address of the local router. So router five is saying that the IP address is dot one on router five side. Um, and then the, the network itself is 192.168 dot four dot zero slash 30. Four dot zero slash 30, 252, I did the subnetting right? Yeah, cool. Yep, it's cool. good. Sweet, dot one on that side. And router six will tell us the IP address. Router six is LSA, type one LSA will tell us the IP address on that side shortly. Um, what else? And that's it. That's all we can learn from router five's type one LSA. So we still have router sixes to look at, router threes to look at, and router four and sevens to look at. So let's mm -hmm. Go ahead and look at um, Let me that database again. Yeah, let's do that. So router router four has five. Router we might as well do router. So what I'm 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 uh, I want to skip router six at the moment because I'm noticing some type five LSAs from router mm. six. So I'll, I'll yeah, come back yeah. to router six shortly. Or will I? Maybe I'll just go into it. No, let's skip it. So let's okay. go and do router. Oh, sorry. Did we do five yet? Well, yeah, we did five. We just did five, yeah. So let's do uh, router three. Three, sure. So router three has five link counts. So let's take a look at what's inside and, and see see what we can find. Um, I wonder if that's going to give us the connectivity to router four and router seven as well. Oh, yeah. Check it out. There it is. So perfect. So we can actually step through this one at a time. Oh, perfect. They all fit on one uh, on one screen. Router three is connected to router four and router seven. I'm seeing the two point to point um, link types within the type mm. one LSA. Yeah. So let's just start with that top one, the connection to router four. Router four is over here. 
Um, and it looks like that link is also a slash 30. I can copy and paste this guy. All right, cool. So one sec. So this is not four though. This is 2.0 slash 30. And then router three is telling us its own IP address on that link is, um, where is it? 2.1 right there. Perfect. Cool. So that takes care of that connection from router three. The next two on the list is telling us about router seven. So we can add router seven over maybe over here so we have more room. And then I'll draw another line over here and I'll add some text. This is going to be 192.168.5.0, also slash 30. Cool. And then uh, we will put the IP address. We're, all, we're looking at router three. Router three is telling us the IP address on its link is 192.168.5.1. Cool. And then the last, so that takes care of that, five, zero, sweet, cool. And then so the last entry in that list of the five uh, link counts inside the type one I'll say for router three is the guy that's highlighted right now. And that's telling us the IP address of router three on the multi-axis link identified by this, by router two, the DR. And that's telling us the IP address is dot two. So let's bring this over here and make this dot two. Cool. Yeah, yep, that's everything we can learn from router three. Uh, okay, so let's go back to the database. I think the only ones we have left are the ones I was avoiding. I think it's router two and router six. Four, six, seven. Oh yeah, a bunch, man. I was getting way ahead of myself. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, let's do four. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, so four is connected to router three, which is we have part of that already kind of confirmed. The IP address is 192.168.2.0, that's confirmed. Uh, and the IP address on router four side is dot two. So we might as well put that down right there. Um, so that takes care of the first two link counts within the type one LSA from router four. The next two in the, are, are in reference to the IP address 192.168.8.0 as a slash 24. Now, since that stub network is by itself, meaning I'm not seeing any other link counts within that output that have to do with the 192168 network. This tells me that it's gonna work actually similar to router one, where it's just a network likely where clients would be connected to, but we don't have another OSPF router. Yep, so this could be it. where, perfect. Let's actually copy and paste both of these things. Uh, and we'll, we'll see how this diagram ends up mapping out. Whatever, <laughs> uh, 192.168.8.0 and this is a slash 24, it is a slash 24. And then the IP address, um, oh, we don't actually know the IP address on, on router force perspective. Now, this actually kind of makes sense because from OSPS perspective, since there's not another OSPF router out this direction, there isn't a route that's going to be point, that, is, that isn't gonna be an IP address that exists as a next hop IP address out that link. So OSPF not knowing or not indicating the IP address right here uh, right here isn't really going to be a problem. Yeah, it's not something the other routers have to know, right? Right, exactly. Um, cool. So, well, so that's the stub network. Okay, sweet. And then the last two items have to do with the connection to uh, router seven. Oh, cool. So router four is also connected to router seven. So let's go ahead and do this link right in here. So the network there is going to be, looks like it's also a slash 30. It's 6.0. And then on router four's interface, that IP address is 6.1. And we haven't looked at router seven to see those IP addresses yet, but that takes care of that, that, that. I don't think we've looked at router six yet either. So I think six and seven are the last two. Uh, yeah, six and seven are the cool. remaining ones. Perfect. So let's go ahead and do, let's do seven first. We'll come back to six, which has the uh, type five LSAs in here. Sure. So now we'll take a look at the type one LSA that router seven is sending. Okay, the type one LSA that router seven is sending has 
uh, two sets of a router LSA subtype and a stub LSA. And essentially it's confirming what we already know, that router seven is connected to the 192.168.5.0 network over here and the 192.168.6.0 network over there. The new pieces of information that we're learning is the IP addresses on router seven's side of each of those links. So on the 6.0 network, it looks like router seven has the dot two IP address. And on the, uh, on the 8.0 network, sorry, 5.0 network, there it is. Yep. Router seven's IP address is dot two also. Cool, so that kind of confirms what we knew about router seven and that lets that happen. So now we can finally go to router six to take a look at what router right. six is telling us. So this is the uh, the confusing one. This one has, actually, if you just want, real quick, go to the just ISPF okay. database real quick. We'll sure, take a sure, look at a sure. few things and I'll explain why I left this one for last. Yep. So router six has a type one LSA, just like any other router. Uh, I noticed that the link count is only three. So you would think that that would be a simpler one. However, down at the bottom, notice that there are two type five LSAs that are being advertised by router six. So I intentionally wanted to leave that towards the end so that we didn't have to uh, worry about as many unknowns in the rest of the topology when we got to router six. So since router six has a type five LSA, that tells me router six is doing some redistribution. Um, and I will visualize that with a diamond because why not? Okay, so let's do it. Let's take a look inside the type one LSA for router six. Okay. okay, so a few things to learn from here. First, way at the top, just above the first point to point router, router six is confirming it's an ASBR, uh, an ASBR meaning an autonomous system border router, meaning it's doing redistribution. So this again confirms what we already knew that router six was doing redistribution. We'll get to that in a moment. Let's first do the rest of the network. So we know from the next point to point uh, link count, it's telling us that it is connected to router five, which we already kind of know. We've already got that over here. The IP address on router six's perspective, rather from router six's side of the link is dot two, four dot two. Oops. Cool. And then the other piece of, oh, we know it's a one and two and eight, four dot zero slash 30. The last item is the stub network, the 10.10.10.0 slash 30 network. Um, let's move our redistribution icon here. And then uh, I will do another. Cool. So router six also has a link over here, which looks like the 10.10. .10 10 dot zero slash 30 network. Yep. Cool. So again, the type one LSA indicates that router six is an ASBR, but doesn't actually tell us what is being redistributed. For that, we'll use a type five LSA. So for at this point, I feel like I've learned everything I can learn from the type one LSA, which means the last thing we have to look at is a type five LSA. So let's go ahead and take a look at that next. Uh, and so, the yeah, type, external. type 5 is a, yeah, exactly. It's an external LSA. Um, and actually, I think you can just hit enter here and it'll show us both at the same time. I wonder if we can put them both on the screen. Yeah, oh, that's good. Perfect. perfect. So here we're seeing the details of each of those type 5 LSAs. Uh, and remember, the whole purpose of these LSAs is for the routers to rebuild a routing table entry for each network that is um, relative to OSPF. So we should be able to see a cost, a network ID, and a net mask inside each of these LSAs. And so if we're looking at the top one, I can see a network ID right there in the link state line. That's telling us the network ID of the network being redistributed into OSBF. And then it looks like what, four, four lines below it, I see a network mask that tells me it's a slash 24. And then three lines below that, I see the metric. So there's the, the cost. So all three of those things are what's used in the routing table for how to actually route packets. And so you can see that all those exist inside of type five LSA. The costs actually exist in all the LSAs. Uh, we haven't been doing them in our topology just to spare time, but it is in there if we needed to. Uh, remember, the LSAs are all that's needed to rebuild an entire routing table for OSBF, which includes the cost. Okay, so what do we have here? So there are two networks being redistributed. Uh, the 10 dot, sorry, the 
2.16.0.0 slash 24 network and the 172.16.1.0 slash 24 network. Both of those are being redistributed by router six. And uh, notice the forwarding address is telling us uh, the IP on the other side, I believe the link. So this is telling me that yeah, there is yeah. a dot two. So that is the that is the next hop on the other side. It is a router. We don't know. We don't know what router it is, since this is external to mm. OSPF. Yeah. So I'll put that right here, and I know that dot two is over here, and I'll create a link to it. Cool. So that's the topology slash twenty four, and I think uh, I think that's it. I think yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. We can. Yeah, learn. the general positioning of everything too is actually quite similar. Is it really? No. Only that, difference is. In my diagram, R6 is on the right side of R5, but everything else is basically the same. Oh, no way. Well, let's see. Let me see your di diagram. Let's see how All you right. Did. All right. So I'll put mine uh, here on the other side. It's a bit longer. So, oh, there we go. So, yeah, basically, same thing. R1, oh, nice. R2, got the correct uh, segments and everything, IP addresses. Um, 122, 7.0 slash 24, and also this 8.0 slash 24, as we said, are just. Uh, like uh, segments that end hosts would connect to, two slash twenty four is there. Nice. Got the sort of group of three routers here, three, four, and seven. Then R five and R six with R six redistributing a couple of static routes that I uh, configured out to an external network over here. Oh, fantastic! So the only really thing that's different is the yeah, location. right, right, yeah. yeah. So otherwise, everything was on point. Oh, I lost the IP address on router six. Where did I put that? And there we go. So other than the uh, actually layout, it looks like we got all the, uh, did we miss the IP address on router six over here? Or is that just something I deleted when I moved? Yeah, it is a dot two, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, there you go. So looks like it is entirely possible to rebuild a network topology using only the LSAs inside the link state database. And of course, these routers do it uh, quite a bit quicker than any human could, <laughs> yeah, uh, no enough. matter how much practice you do. But uh, it is interesting to see. Um, it's interesting as an exercise, both to uh, um, test your, un your understanding of OSPF and how LSAs work, and also just to see um, that it is possible, like this is the exact same process that routers use to build their map of the network because an OSPF is a link state routing protocol. So this is how it uh, finds the best route to each destination it knows about. Well, this was good fun. One thing to note is all of this happened to be single area OSPF. Recall that all the routers within an area have the same link state database. So we were able to use the link state database router one to extract all the information for this entire area but any routers in this area would have the exact same link state database. What we're gonna do next in a future video is do the exact same thing, but do multi-area OSPF. And this will show you how OSPF is very much link state within the area, but on, uh, on either side of, of an area boundary of an ABR, it's actually distance vector. You'll see that one area really only has distance vector information towards the ABR and no actual information for what's happening on the other side of the ABR. So for that, we'll need to look at the link state database of a router in either area, but that we'll be doing in a future video. That's an interesting way to put it, that it's a distance vector between areas. I haven't thought about it like that, but yeah, that is true. Well, I think that's it. So if uh, if you guys want more OSPF related stuff, you can go to pracnet.net slash OSPF. If you guys are looking for more CCNA or and now upcoming CCNP content, check out Jeremy's channel. He has one of the uh, one of the best CCNA courses already out there, and I'm sure it'll be the same for the CCNP Encore or Encore. Yep, thank you. Jeremy likes to say it. Encore, yeah, Encore, Enterprise Core. The course is just getting started. It's going to take a while to finish, but um, I am working on it full time now, along with a couple other projects. So hopefully, um, I'll get through it a little bit faster than my CCNA course, which took over two years. But let's see how that goes. Thanks for watching. Um, I hope this was very instructive um, to show you how OSPF works, and yeah, definitely. Take a look at the next one where we do this with multi-area OSPF. It'll be a bit more of a challenge. Well, thanks a lot for watching, everybody. If you guys want to see more content from Jeremy and I, definitely let us know in the comments. Otherwise, hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Yep, thanks, everyone.